Welcome to this episode of Adobe Live. I'm joined by Dave Cochran. What do we cover today? Uh, we're going to be covering uh, the process of animating a character within After Effects and uh, doing some basic rigging. It's a great episode. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. I'm Flynn, and I'm here with Dave. Co- G'day, everyone. Co- How Cochrane. Co- 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 Cochrane. 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 Knew we practiced this <laughs> uh, for all, every single day leading up to this. Yeah, and there we go. I failed at the at the beginning. It's so nice to have you here. Uh, thanks. It's uh, great to be here. Yeah, yeah. really this excited. Is, this is very awesome. Um, very awesome. And um, welcome everyone. Um, hey, Renice and Kay. Yes, it is playing now. Dominic, hello. Um, welcome. We're going to get stuck into some stuff soon. Uh, if you're watching the live show on Adobe APAC Live, you can log in to join in the chat and ask questions. We're going to get really deep into the weeds, I think, a little bit, into some character animation. Yes, we are going to try and condense an art form that can take years to master right. into an hour. Which is an art form in and of yeah. itself. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is going to be really, really good. So, uh, yeah, you can use your uh, Adobe details to, to log in and you can ask questions throughout. So um, if you see Dave doing something like, hey, what was that shortcut? Or, you know, what's that, what's that plugin? Or what's mm. happening here? How do you get your hair to have so much lift? Um, any sort of question like that, please don't hesitate to ask, and we'll find some time to, to ask those questions. Hey, Sobin, how are you going? Can you guys see the chat? Hopefully you can. Um, but yeah, how about uh, you, just before we get started, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, excellent. So uh, I'm creative director at a uh, motion design and animation studio called Hank Mango. Uh, we specialize in uh, character-driven narrative, but we do a lot of uh, different work. Yeah. Uh, from informational videos for banks uh, through to fun explainers for uh, universities, uh, small companies, big companies, and uh, also tonight we're uh, doing some graphics for the uh, big State of Origin match out at uh, the stadium. And, That's a yeah. football game, I'm told. Football game, yes. Right. Yes, yeah, so we're doing uh, in-field uh, game graphics for that. And, wow. Yeah, for the pre-game show. When you got into animation, was that you attempting to get into the world of football, or is it just a happy well, accident? I, I, I am a, an excellent athlete, but no, right. it's, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it just, you know, Opportunities present themselves sometimes, and uh, yeah. you, you never know where uh, animation's going to take you. It can take you to some uh, pretty fun spots. Awesome! Yeah. Mm. Oh, very, very good. That's great. Hey, everyone. I see that. Uh, I think we're. I think we are live. Um, hey, hey, Ron Sobin and Prasad in the in the chat. Um, so, how about we get stuck into? Will you give us a bit of an overview of what we're going to do today. Yeah, cool. So what I'm going to do today is uh, a condensed, broken down version of how. I would approach animating a character mm. inside of After Effects. Cool. Uh, on the on the internet, there's a there's a lot of tutorials and there's a, there's a lot of uh, knowledge about you know sort of how to rig a character. Mm-hmm. By rigging, I mean sort of you know getting a character and making it able to be animated mm. within After Effects. Uh, but there's not a lot on how what what to do once you've got that rigged character. Yeah. You know, there's a few walk cycle tutorials. But what I'm want to do today is try and go through a step-by-step process of how you get a performance out of your character and you know I use that term performance mm. because y- you want to start thinking more less about like geez how am I going to make this move mm. to why is this character moving I love it the, we're getting philo- philosophical yes um, here yeah you know cuz character animation uh, at its heart is is kind of like acting yeah. you you want a performance out of your character right. you know in order to tell the story okay so what we're going to do is just go through step by step how i would approach uh, you know creating creating an action mm. um, so that you know if you get the process down and it doesn't get in the way, then you can concentrate on your performance. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, why don't we get stuck into that as mm-hmm. we do? Hey, guys in the chat, notice some people are talking about rigging and um, and things like that and asking a couple of questions. Are you animators? I'd be really interested if anyone in the audience has some experience with animation. Like, are you an animator now? Are you studying animation? Are you a designer that maybe is interested in animation? Let, let us know and we'll, we'll try to um, sort of answer some questions that way as well. Um, cool. Excellent. Uh, so, <clears throat> first I'll just uh, quickly give a, a, a brief overview of mm-hmm. how we'll get our character ready to animate mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. Two main tools that we're going to be using, uh, Illustrator and After Effects. Mm-hmm. And uh, within After Effects, we'll be using a, a plugin called Duik, 
Um, but I'll get on to more of that in a sec. Mm-hmm. So first first thing, Illustrator, I created, that's where I created this character. Mm. Uh, you can create a character within uh, Illustrator or Photoshop uh, and bring that in. Uh, I won't go through how I've, I've designed and developed this character. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you know, I, the design is basically me because, you know, I wanted to... Just like have, to point out the spare tire that you've given yourself there. I didn't. I did. I didn't want to take any liberties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, I'm an athlete. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to point out uh, when when uh, you're designing a character for animation is uh, one over here. You'll see everything is layer. All the layers are named. Yes. You know, we're big fans of naming layers in every you, app. Yes. Organization is key. The more you're organized, mm. uh, the more you can, all the program will get out of your way mm. and you can just concentrate on like creating that. killer animation, killer animation. I like know? that. Just a shout out. It's really interesting to hear mm. where, um, where, where all you people are from as well. Teacher looking to find online lessons more interesting. That's awesome. We hope you like the content. We've got motion designers in here. People that are obviously like fairly, uh, familiar with Duick and, and rubber, rubber hose as well, mm-hmm. which we we're going to talk about in a bit, which is cool. So yeah, it's great. Excellent. So, uh, that's the first thing I just wanted to point out with this one. And the second thing I just wanted to point out was sort of uh, a couple of things that I've, I've done in here to help with the build. Mm. And I'm just going to go into preview mode, which is, uh, or I think it's preview mode, but it's Apple Y. Um, I use all the shortcuts, so I forget what things are called. Mm. Uh, and you'll notice that, uh, especially around all of these limb areas, they're all perfect circles. And that is so I can get the correct deformation mm. at all of the joints. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll see that uh, why that becomes uh, important in a sec. So that's that's one of the things. So each each of these little limbs is its own got its own little uh, circle for the limb. And the other thing I just wanted to point out is just these little markers that mm. I've put, and they're on their own separate layer. And I'll show you why they're important again in a second. Cool. All right. So that's sort of uh, all we'll do on uh, Illustrator. Uh, like I said, there's a heap of resources out there on sort of um, building uh, characters and, and that sort of thing. But we want to get into the juicy animation kind of stuff. So here we are in After Effects. All right. And we've got our character and uh, he's, he's imported mm. and all of that sort of stuff. So we've got all of our layers here, all nicely uh, named, of course. Cool. And um, so... Just reading like yeah. some, some people like talking mm-hmm. about um, getting started into this area. How did you import just exactly the, the steps to import the, yeah. the layers from After Effects? Sure. Uh, sorry, from um, yeah. our, our buddy Illustrator. No worries. Well, I uh, uh, love a good shortcut key, so it's Apple yeah. I to import. import. Yeah. Find your file, mm-hmm. uh, Dave character. And the two main things that you want to uh, do is import it as a composition. And you want to import it as layer size. Okay. If you do it, if you do it document size, you're going to end up with all of these massive layers, and you can't select anything, and uh, mm. it just becomes a, a nightmare. So la- layer size is where you want to be. Perfect. Awesome. Very I'll just good. cancel that because I've already got uh, my character that I've imported. Just before we get stuck in, we've got a question: yeah, sure. Is 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 there a shortcut to toggle down the the mask slash shape control keyframe layer when in AFX? Shape layer control keyframe. I'm I thought that might have been referring to something we were talking about. Maybe you could uh, refine that question and we can come yeah, back to it. Sorry. We'll come back to it. Yeah. Uh, I think Lance has kind of just uh, answered that one. Uh, if anything's got a keyframe on it, you, that's that's correct. Cool. There we yeah. go. All right. Solving the problems in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Nice one. Uh, so here is uh, my character that I've imported. And... Just uh, let's zoom in a bit here. A couple of things that when you've imported a character, you'll notice that nothing moves where it's supposed to. Mm. So obviously that's that's the forearm. That's supposed to be rotating from the elbow. Mm. So you'd go through and with your file, you line up your anchor points. I hit Y to get the anchor point tool. So that that uh, crosshair there, that's the anchor point. Mm-hmm. Great. Y with the anchor point tool, move that, 
And you'll notice that I'm putting the anchor point over those U Butte markers yep, that, I, that uh, you previously that I did in Illustrator, and they're perfectly in the middle of the circle. They're perfectly so you know in right. the middle of the circle. Is, yeah, is that by eye? That's not snapping, is it? That's just by eye. That's just by eye. Okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a huge uh, handy hint. Just mm. you know, setting up those markers because in Illustrator you've got all your fun snapping tools, so mm. you can snap it right to the center of that circle. Great. So when you come into here in After Effects, mm. you're um, you're all sorted. Awesome. Okay. And then the next thing uh, that you want to do once you've got your uh, anchor points uh, in the right area is parent things. So. We've got a hand here. Technically, it's not a hand. It's it's kind of a, a, a nubbin, if you will, <laughs> right. of, of a hand region. Right. But it still kind of needs to be there for the um, uh, IK to work. Mm -hmm. So we would parent that to the lower arm, and then we parent that to the upper arm, and the upper arm would be parented to the torso. So now when we move the upper arm, it's attached. Cool. So they're all parented to each other, which is, which is great. And that will mm. become apparent in the next next step. So awesome. I would go through then, do that for all for, the arms. For everything. Everything, yep. all the arms, all the legs, all of that. Okay, cool. So the steps are you're going you're gonna to line up the line up the joints yep. um, and then parent everything so that everything works and just testing it, making sure you got it all right. Yep. Cool. And just so I'm not uh, boring everyone, here's one I prepared earlier. Nice. Everything is... Uh, has the anchor points where I need them to be, everything's parented where I need to be, and I don't need my markers layer anymore, so I'll just get rid of that. Right. Okay. So next uh, we'll just, this character now needs to be uh, rigged so it can be ready for animation. Now, I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be using a program called, uh, a plugin for mm -hmm. After Effects called Duik. Uh, there's a couple of other big ones. There's mm -hmm. um, Limba, and rubber hose. Uh, all of them have their strengths, all of them have their weaknesses. Mm. Uh, Duik, it, it is a super powerful tool, mm. and one of its major benefits, it's free. So, oh yeah, that always helps. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, although, you know, the, the uh, developer does, you know, do um, like crowdfunding stuff. And, right. And, uh, you know, uh, our studio, we've donated a couple of times because it, it's such a great tool and we use it so often it's great. and and there's so many things inside of it that you just and i'll, I'll show one or two other little things a bit later awesome. inside duik uh yeah. but we're going to be using that today in order to rig now i won't go full, through the full rigging process mm -hmm. but it's a uh, pretty pretty simple now with duik uh it's come a long way in the last couple of years mm -hmm. basically you would select uh let's go back to our arm You've got your hand, select your lower arm, select your upper arm, and then you just hit auto rig and IK. And now you have a rig done. Cool. And because I've already done all my anchor points in the correct spot, it's deforming correctly. Now you'll notice it's going up rather than down. Mm. Uh, that is a setting in uh, the controller. Just reverse. There we go. Oh, cool. That's that. So this is something that you c could do manually, but it would take you a really, really long time. Is that what the plugin is fast forwarding you for? <coughs> uh, or it wouldn't look, work in the same way? No, the the amount of expressions and code that that has gone into it working like this. Right. You know, yes, if you're an expression genius, right, and and loved a good bit of math. Mm -hmm. You, you could get get with it, but uh, this this is just you know it's uh, it does it all for you. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. So it's it's all um, yeah running all maths and expressions behind the scenes and and that sort of thing. So uh, that is how we would rig the um, the limbs. And uh, so we'll just uh, so once that's all done, this is what our character would pretty much look like. So we have controllers for the arms, one for our neck and head, mm -hmm. torso, pelvis, and feet. And uh, if you have a look down here in my uh, timeline, you'll notice that 
I've um, there's a lot of uh, layers that aren't there anymore. Right. What I've done is I've shied them all. Great. Okay. When you're when you're doing character animation, you want like I said before, you want the program and you want everything out of your way so you can concentrate on the performance. Yeah. So again, it's always great to organize everything, get it all you know nice and neat. Shy away anything you don't need. Let's just get rid of that background. We don't even need that. Probably won't be animating the master controller. Get rid of that. And then all you've got is seven layers, and that's all you need to concentrate on. Cool. Nice and actually, simple. Yeah, because yeah. it can definitely be intimidating, I guess, from people that might not be as, as anyone who is experienced as you mm. are to jump into. Um, I mean, we get it all the time to After Effects and Premiere. Uh, just because the timeline can seem so very scary, yeah. Um, and so yeah. I think I think even those sorts of little things that are probably like a natural reaction to you, just to hide them and everything, is like really valuable for people to to learn, just so they can simplify it. Yeah, like being organized and that sort of thing. Like it's it's hard because you you get excited and you want to you want to animate and you want to create something that looks amazing. Yeah, and you just want to get in there and like move stuff around and you just you know it, you've got to sort of go all right no. I've got to do, it's, it's like um, doing your homework on a Friday night so you can enjoy your weekend. I didn't do much of my homework, so. Oh, okay, but, there you go. Well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, once you're, once you're all organized, then that way, uh, it's all, everything's ready for you to just animate. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. It's really cool. cool. So we, we now have a rigged character. So let's get into sort of the, um, the crux of it, which is uh, how we would go about animating this thing. Mm. All right. Uh, so, what uh, we're going to do is, I'm going to bring up, what we're going to be doing uh, for this is we're going to be going through and using a lot of these, which are the 12 principles of animation. Okay. Okay. And these uh, were written back in the 1930s by uh, the uh, two very senior Disney animators. and. Uh, put down in a book called The Illusion of Life mm. and uh, they are basically the principles of animation so that you can get a convincing performance out of um, out of characters mm. and uh, you do and each and we won't go into every single one but as we go through this process I'll be coming back to this slide cool. and, and showing each of these little principles and showing how that works mm. and why we do that awesome. uh, and that sort of thing. So, you know, and if you if you are interested in, in character animation and, and you want to get uh, better at it, highly recommend looking these up mm -hmm. and, and seeing what they do. And even if you're a motion designer and you're, and you're moving a lot of type around and, and that sort of thing, mm. you know, the, the core principles of these, uh, you know, core principles of these will improve what you're doing you know, immeasurably. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So they're 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 really good. Um, I could I could spend hours just talking about these, mm. but we'll 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 move on. It's a good thing about animation is if you if you're searching for stuff like this, is you often get this amazing animation explaining what yeah. these principles are as mm. well, which can be really good. So it's a fun search. Yes. Yeah. No, that's right. On on YouTube, a lot of um, uh, animators, in order to learn them, have animated these. Right. And yeah. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's great. Cool. All right. So. We have our character ready to um, animate, but uh, the first question is, what are, what are we going to animate? What are we what are we going to do? And what does Dave do? Yes, what is you at a you at a computer? You would, that would be a, that would be a boring animation <laughs> with just the sun going up and yeah. then coming and, and then, then coming, coming back down. down. Yeah, yeah, and getting more. It's and, a looping animation. <laughs> more and more tired. No, <laughs> you're just aging slowly. Yeah. Uh, that's, so I'm wow, that took a depressing now. turn. Yeah, I'm it did. really yeah. sorry about that. That Let's was bring my back fault. Up. Let's bring uh, it back up. Yes, I wanted to say hi. That's like I thought this is my first time That's on right. Adobe Live. Mm -hmm. I've come on. I thought, you know what? I'm going to come on and say g'day. Uh, and that's and that's what I thought this character could do. Cool. So I have a purpose. And then I thought, well, and one of the great things to do when you're animating is have some reference. Mm -hmm. So I got one of the other trusty members in the studio. And there he is. There hello. There's, there's me saying <laughs> hello. Hey. hey. 
<laughs> all right. We could just yeah. play this all day. We, we, this we is could. a fun hour. This is... <laughs> <laughs> now, you'll, you'll, you'll notice on this, this is, this is not usually how I would uh, wave to someone on the street, but here's the first one of these principles of animation. Right. Exaggeration. Right. I've exaggerated my movements, uh, you know, in order so that it creates a bit more comedy, mm-hmm. all that sort of thing. Right. And also, I was, I was thinking about it, and I wanted it to be kind of a little jaunty wave. I was like, hey, hey, hey. I like it. You know, yeah. uh, but that's one of the benefits of character animation is you get to choose the performance. It's mm. really acting. So I could have been super excited to be on Adobe Live and wave furiously, or, mm. I, or I could have been playing it cool and just, you know, going, hey, yeah. yeah. Well, you can't flick with your nubbins. So yeah, well, yeah. That would have been, <laughs> would have been <laughs> difficult. It would have, hey. been, would have been a bit tough. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so I shot some reference. And I just wanted to show this, uh, this other one, uh, which is uh, well, how this sort of works in the scheme of things. So it looks like you're stabbing someone. Yeah. Um, I'd right. be interested to think. Uh, ch- <laughs> let's give Chad a moment to <laughs> just guess. Guess, guess, guess what the I'm trying an- to do. Guess the animation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This I, this could go very wrong. It could. Yeah. It could. I kind of was hoping for that. Okay. Um, let's, all right. let's let's show them what we'll, we'll let's reveal. Show them, oh, oops. Sorry. Let's <laughs> show let's show them. And What's this, behind door number one. Yeah. Ah. So, it was a mango. <laughs> there we go. Oh wow, Renee uh, got, got, got it. Got it. Yep. Flipping a burger. Flipping a burger. Yeah. Wow. And this is uh, our Christmas card last year. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> is that you, a little Hank Mango? That is that is Hank Mango. Hank Mango. Yes, that is the Hank. Mm-hmm. Yes, excellent. All right, so <clears throat> we've got our reference, got our character. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go uh, animating. People picked up flipping really well. Yeah, mm. <laughs> slapping an intern. <laughs> Not at Hank Mango. Wow. No, we don't do that. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, let's uh, bring up our reference. And uh, let's put that in a new comp viewer. And then we've got our character for blocking. Okay. So in this, what we're doing uh, now is a process called blocking and which is putting in the major poses. And surprise, surprise, that's one of the 12 principles of animation. Mm-hmm. Cool. Here's straight ahead action and pose to pose. Um, so we're doing the pose to pose part. Um, that's just a way, uh, a, a way in which you can approach animation. So, right. you know, my reference, I've identified uh, five key poses, and I've put markers on my timeline. Okay. In order to sort of separate that out, so I've got the first one. If I hit two, it jumps to two. My uh, jaunty teapot. Yeah, oh, yeah, yep. teapot. Yeah, teapot pose. Then, you know, happy teapot. <laughs> and then the wave. Teapot. <laughs> and then back to normal. Back to normal, Dave. Yeah. That's awesome. So how do you do the markers? Is there a shortcut for that? Yeah. You love your shortcuts? Yeah, I do love my shortcuts. So one, two, three, four, five is shift one for one, shift two for two, shift three for three. Great. Yeah, and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, all the way up to to zero. Awesome. Yeah. I, I love putting markers on things. It, it makes it easier to time stuff out. Great. So... Now we would go into uh, blocking, which is putting in the major poses. So here's our first pose. All right, I'm going to do a lot of zooming around. We grab sort of the pelvis, move it across and down. Let's angle it, move the muffs. There we go. So we're just trying to use our pose here on the right as reference. Feet need to just be a little bit wider apart. Then get our arm, change the direction. There we go. So as we're doing this, guys, yeah. um, 
feel free to send through some questions as we go through. If there's time, we'll ask as we go, and we can also have a bit of a QA and a at the end as well. So if there's something about what Dave's doing or something that we chat about on the stream, feel free to ask away. We'll try and try and get it in. Um, but if there's also general questions about uh, for Dave, like you know, yeah, running please. running the studio and working with clients and all that sort of stuff that you want to that you want to ask, feel free to put it in, and then we'll we'll try to get to them at the end. Cool. So uh, now what I want to do is just add keyframes on all the bits that will be uh, being animated. So the uh, neck will only have a rotation keyframe. The Hands, they won't rotate. I'll only be animating the position. Mm -hmm. Our pelvis will have a um, rotation and a position keyframe. So that's Alt-P and Alt-R, just to get those shortcuts going in there. And torso, Alt-R. All right. Cool. Now, all what we want to do is set that to hold keyframes. So you select all those keyframes, right click, toggle hold keyframe because what we're going to do next is the second pose. So we've got our first pose down, pretty close to what we're at. If I had time, I'd probably mess around with the angles a bit, but uh, let's move on. We've got you on a time limit today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so what we would then do is go to pose two and Jaunty, jaunty teapot. Teapot. That's just down by the side. So I am I am furiously going between uh, V, which is selection tool, and mm -hmm. W, which is rotation tool. All right. So that's that's my left hand is just W V W V, then a good old Control Z in there for some undos. Um, yeah. Because the amount of times that you stuff up in, in uh, this and you just need to redo it. And okay. So all right, so we've got our second pose. Uh, and what you would do is go through and then do three, four, and five uh, for those poses. Right. All right. Now, again, we're on Bit of a timeline here, so here's one I prepared earlier. On so, a timeline, literally, yeah. and for, yeah. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> so here it is, and he's blocked out. And if we have a look, we select our keys, keys and uh, as someone pointed out earlier, U shows all of our keyframes. Mm -hmm. You'll see that they're all hold keyframes. Right. And these are the major pose parts of the posing. Okay. Cool. And this is just just to really get. The, the core parts of the animation down. Mm. All right, so next what we would want to do is, back to our 12 principles of animation, is anticipation. Okay. We add our in anticipation keyframes. Now, anticipation is, uh, what that means is, uh, if you think of a baseball pitcher, Mm -hmm. they'll do like a, a wind up right. before they throw the ball. Mm -hmm. They don't just hold the ball and push it out. Right. It doesn't work. Not the good ones. Not, not the good ones. No, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> I think me playing baseball would do that. But uh, <laughs> I'm more when you finish with your football career. Well, yeah. Like I said, yeah, I'm more of a football player. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we would. Um, so what you want to do is basically telegraph the movement, the wind up. Right. The an and we, in animation, we call that anticipation. Cool. Yeah. And anticipation can be used for lots of things. Um, you know, and it, it's it's really good for uh, guiding the viewer's eye. So again, if you're not doing a character or anything like that, you just need to make something move across screen. Mm. You add in some, um, a bit of, uh, you add in a bit of uh, anticipation mm. and you can, you know, it, it means the, the viewer is ready. You know, they get prepared because they're like, oh, someone's coming. Right. And then, you know, rather than uh, it just happening. Mm, cool. 
So first, what I'm going to do is just to add a, a few extra keyframes. Uh, so I've just selected these front keyframes. Here's another great part in Duik. It's the copy animation uh, section, which allows you to copy frames from a lot of layers and then paste them. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm just going to do that for each of the movements. I'm just doing a sort of... Yeah, why did you move those ones over a bit? Uh, just, it, I, I moved them over just because it was, they were getting close to that one. Right. Um, and it's just so visually I had a little bit more space for my eye. Mm. Uh, once we get to the next stage, that's where I'll start to really sort of finesse that timing. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're not too fussed about their positioning at the moment? Not at the, not at the moment. Yeah, I've got the major, yeah, I'm going to, and that's why we keep everything in these blocks. Mm. Uh, it's so that, you know, I know that this is going to be one movement, you know, and then once I create, oh, keep on selecting layers here, that's going to be another movement and copy and paste, that's going to be another movement. So anticipation, so we're going to go from this guy here to this guy here. So uh, in order to anticipate, the pelvis goes uh, sort of up and across. So the anticipation sort of that would be, let's just move forward, keep a few keyframes, down and across. The arms would move up a bit because he's coming down and the torso would move, uh, rotate a bit more f uh, across. So if I just... So that's the sort of anticipation of so it. So much attitude with this little girl. <laughs> girl. Yeah. I like it. Uh, for, the, for the next one, it goes from here to here. So the uh, pelvis is going up and across and the arm is going up. So you'd kind of just, and it doesn't have to be huge movements. It's just enough to sort of make it realistic. Right. Well, just to add a little bit extra to it. And that. And that's just telegraphing the mo mo movements mm. so that we know what's kind of going to happen. Okay. And all right, how are we doing on time? We're all right. Doing well. Okay. Awesome. So I'll jump ahead here. We don't need that anymore. Just got an animation now. So I've got all of my major poses with anticipation. Nice. All right. So friendly. <laughs> so uh, what we'll do now is now we need to get out of our hold keyframes and right. actually and actually make these things. Uh, move. Hey, um, well, yeah. just before we do, yeah, yeah. Do Dominic and Lance were talking in the chat about Character Animator, mm. um, and one of them was asking, have you ever used it? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, it's something I want to investigate further. I feel mm. like there's there's some really good parts to Character Animator and that mm. sort of thing, but we just haven't had a project in studio that really warranted the use of it. Mm. Um, and that sort of thing, because animating with Duick and animating with Rob Hose, Limba, or even Character Animator, each has mm. their strengths and weaknesses. Totally, and, yeah. and you pick you pick the um, you pick the tool for the job, yeah, and that sort of thing. And like there has been, you know, uh, some especially in the last year or so, some features in Character Animator that have piqued my interest, mm. but it just haven't hasn't um, uh, come to fruition yet. I've, yeah. I've got dreams of getting the little Hank character and doing like a live blog or something. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting it's, that you said that because Lance mm. was saying that it's like um, really great for um, 
like a cons- one single consistent on-screen character and yeah. things like that, which is interesting. It's just it's interesting that there's all these different tools out there. Mm. Yeah, there is, and uh, you know, you just got to kind of weigh up what's what's best for the job, you know, mm. and and that sort of thing. Cool. And you know, sometimes the hip pocket because you know plugins can start adding up after a while. That's true. Yes. Uh, excellent. So uh, what we'll do now is turn all of these into linear keyframes. And so easy way to do that, select them all, hold down commands, click, and now we've got them all as linear keyframes. Now, if I play that through though, you'll notice that it's, it's not looking too snazzy. His arm's got this like, pretty crazy. Yeah. Oof, I can't do that with my arm. No, no. <laughs> um, so uh, what we would do next is back to 12 principles of animation to work on our arcs. Cool. All right, so arcs is basically every everything in the human body kind of moves in an arc. You think about how when you walk, uh, mm-hmm. your arm is on a pivot right. uh, point, which is your shoulder mm-hmm. and your elbow. That's a pivot point as well. So that means that naturally everything would move in a pendulum fashion, which is an arc. Right. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so whenever you're doing character animation, you really want to concentrate on your arcs. Mm. Uh, and even when, again, when you're animating anything else, like anticipation and uh, arcs, you know, they can really bring even even simple stuff, mm. you know, to life. Mm. You know, so ma- rather than just having something animate in a straight line, yeah. if you think about how it could move in a nice arc and stuff like that, can make more natural movement and all that sort of thing. So it's something really important to, to think about when you're animating anything in After Effects just to, to concentrate on those arcs. Mm, cool. So let's see how that would kind of work. Let's um that arm's annoying me. So let's let's go to that one because that's uh probably the, the, the quickest fix and the easiest one to, mm. to seize. So when when you're waving, bring your arm up. Well, that one goes off camera, so we'll do it here. <laughs> you know, that comes in an arc and goes up. So mm. we'd want to do the same with our character. Now, you can see I've got my motion paths there. All right, let's grab these, grab the handles. And what we want to do is make sure that the motion path between each of the keyframes is in a lovely arc. Let's. I think we could probably even push that further. To really get a. There we go. And then probably even go up like that. So it comes up in a nice. Up and then down. There we go. Cool. And then say when it waves out, again that would be an arc because it's pivoting from the shoulder and the elbow. So let's just go in the motion paths. Always good to have motion paths uh, switched on. You can do that in the preferences. Uh, in also in the preferences, uh, you can adjust how many motion paths you can see. Mm-hmm. I think by default it's on so that you can see all of them. Right. And if you select something and you've got, you know, 80 keyframes, it just mm. becomes an absolute mess. So you can actually make that a little bit um, shorter to keep your viewport nice and easy. Cool. I might just uh, address yeah. Elise in the chat. Uh, so you said, um, well, you asked a question, so we should yeah. pass this on to Dave, actually. Uh, what tool would be best for people just starting out in animation? Just starting out in animation. Yeah, I guess um, we were talking about character animator for a moment there, and we're in yeah. the, we're in After Effects. So, mm-hmm. you know, what advice would you give to someone? Well, I think uh, super fresh, super super fresh. Yeah. Uh, if if you can, uh, like if you can afford it, probably Limbo, which I, I think is maybe forty US dollars. Right. Because it's it's a a one press solution and you'll get a limb, right. you know, and it comes with presets and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, and that, and you can just kind of 
hit a button and you've got a character that, you know, you've got some arms and you've got some legs. Mm. You attach that to a body and you're, you're ready to roll. Awesome. Duick does have, uh, like, Duick is great because it's, it's, it's free and it's got mm. a lot of... Um, a lot of good, a lot of scope to it. Yeah. But sometimes the uh, the barrier to entry for Duick can be a little a intimidating. L- yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off there. No, no, I no. I don't no, know no if we mentioned Limba. Yeah. Um, Limba's a plugin for After Effects. Yes. I don't know if we mentioned that when we were chatting before, or we actually mentioned on the live show. So okay. we'll leave a link to that. Um, yeah. In and we'll leave a link to Duick Rubber Hose. Uh, and Limba just in, in, in the in the chat here and also on the YouTube. So if you're watching this on yeah. YouTube or you're watching it on video on demand, we'll leave those links in there. And mm. I also kind of wanted to segue into that um, you very kindly offered to share this. Yes. Um, yeah, so I've, I've uh, yeah, uh, on the, well, we're putting it on the YouTube. Yeah, we'll put it on YouTube maybe? for like a month or something. Yeah. So if you're interested, we'll, we'll leave it up on Dropbox or something and then you can you can download it Yeah. Um, it and then you can play around. You could even follow along and treat this as a tutorial. So if you're yeah. just starting out, uh, Elise, I think you asked that question, you mm. could you could create, you know, follow along step by step. Yeah, and uh, I w- it won't be a fully rigged character just yep. because the, the Duick uh, expressions are proprietary, but you can get Duick from, I think we're going to put the link in the show We'll put show the link notes. up. And it's, so you know, it's, it's, uh, it is pretty easy to get started, but Limber and Rubber Hose are just one-click solutions. Cool. And Duick's getting there. It really is. It's just, you know, it just uh, it's uh, just a lot bigger. So, cool. Yeah, it's easier to get lost. Awesome. Okay, so uh, so arcs. So we're back on arcs. So what you would do is go through the entire body and work on all of the arcs. Uh, for the hands, the pelvis, and the arms. And let's just jump to one where I've, I've gone through it all. So here's our arm, and if we have a look at the motion path, you see it's got a nice arc up, arc across, down. All in here is nice and fluid, circular. And if we jump into our pelvis, you also see it's all nicely arced. So, if I just do a little bit of a review of that, great. Everything's awesome. kind. Everything's kind of moving the way that I want it to now. Mm. All right. It's just that my timing's not great. Right. Okay. Right? And so, what I've done is I've we've blocked, we've done anticipation, we've done our arcs. And now we're going to do uh, easing. And if we go back to our principles of animation. Here we go. Slow in and slow out. Easing. So this is an, another uh, principle. Now, if you think of, say, a car, mm-hmm. it doesn't just go 0 to 100 in zero. Right. It has to speed up. Okay. And then when it breaks, it has to slow down. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with all things in nature. They need to speed up. They need to slow down. All right. So, uh, and the only things that are only really ever, you know, s- s- uh, stop uh, you know, suddenly and stuff, quite robotic or right. you unnatural. Know, unnatural. Mm-hmm. So easing is a big point part of this. So let's just go through and work on our easing and our timing. So I'm going to just do uh, this sort of as, as a, a, a bulk sort of one and then go back and finesse. So it's just easy easing every every keyframe. Every keyframe. Yeah. Cool. All right. And what I would do is is you could do it either way. You could go through and do each movement and work on it. But just for uh, just because there's four movements and um, I know you know where where everything's at because it's all still nicely organised. Um, I'm just going to do it bulk. Great. Okay. So now. All right, because I've done that easing, it's uh, done a few little hairy things with my uh, keyframes because After Effects, when you add in arcs, sometimes likes to add uh, movement on the other side. So if we say, select this, it's got this weird motion path going off here. Right. The way I fix that is usually just make that a hold keyframe. And then just 
do that there. So that's, so we've got our easing. All right, so now I can start to work, really work on my timing. And because I've got it all nicely neat, nicely laid out in my timeline, I know exactly where everything is, what mm -hmm. the movements are, that sort of thing. So let's have a look here. I, I kind of I kind of like the first movement. It's it's working for me, but that uh, is way too fast. So we'll just grab that and pull it out, and then I don't want it to hold too much before he starts his wave. So I'll do that, and it's a nice long jaunty wave. So we'll slow that down. Cool. I like that slow, exaggerated. Yeah. Hey. Oh, and I'll just extend this out. So getting the timing down a bit more. That's moving a lot better for me. Yeah. But I want to push it further. So what I would do now is start jumping into my graph editor and the graph editor is where the real magic happens. Uh, this is this is where you get really fine-tuned control over your animation. Right. All right. So this is our wave. What I'm going to do. This uh, represents the speed mm -hmm. at which it moves. This baseline is zero, and this uh, upper line is pixels per second. All right. So I'm going to just grab that handle there. I don't want it to come to a complete stop, so I'll move that there. Same with this one. Hmm. Just move that out. And let's see how that's going. Hey, let's, let's just even ease that some more. There we go. And what I would do for this stage now is I would go through every part look at its easing, look at its timing, and look at the graph editor, and mm. really just nail down those movements. Right. Lock them in. Uh, what? But what I would do is I would still always keep all of my keyframes. See how they're all still lined up? Well, that one's not, but they're all still lined up. I would keep everything lined up uh, just so, again, it's easier to work with. Right. Uh, Right, because what we would do is in the next step is we would offset the keyframes. So here we've got character. I've done all the easing. I've gone through the graph editor. So if we have a look here, I've manipulated everything, changed stuff around, you know, it's uh, and played around with it. But the final little step is you would offset the keyframes. So this is uh, something where the human body doesn't always move at exactly the same time all the time. Yeah, I was going to say, it's kind of like um, it's almost dancing a little bit. It's like step one, step two, step three, step four, right? But normally we don't, we don't move like that, right? No, no. So it's, it's, it's more about sort of, uh, as well the, the mechanics of the body. So the, mm. like... Generally, the you would your hips move before your shoulders do, you know, right. or depending on the movement, your hand might reach out before your body follows it, and that sort of thing. Right, right, right. right. So it's it's creating a little bit of offset with our keyframes to give a more human-like performance. Mm, cool. Right. Uh, now you can do this like this is this is where it's really just starts tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, mm. and and character animation does get to be like that. It can be tweak till the cows come home and stuff like that. Right. Uh, when when that sun goes down and Dave gets older, and yeah, that's that's that's, that's him you, tweaking. Yes, that's me tweaking. Uh, deadlines are brilliant for character animation because right. it stops you tweaking. <laughs> uh, but some general quick wins is you know you can grab your uh, pelvis. It usually is the thing that moves first. Just offset that by a keyframe, you know, and then when it waves, you can just offset the. Uh, the anticipation, and then lengthen out the the uh, slowdown. Right, and it will just mean that 
it's moving at a different speed to the rest of the body, so it mm. won't look as uniform. Then with the head, because the head kind of gets you know pulled around by the rest of the body, mm. unless it's there's a clear uh, reason for something, in which case the head sometimes leads, you can just push them back and then... Right, so it's very subtle. It's very but... subtle, mm. uh, but it just gives that little bit more life to your character mm. and, and starts it to make it look... Uh, more believable mm. and that sort of thing. So what what the neck what I would do from this point is go through and look at all of those keyframes and get very very granular mm. and and just you know grab each second, set my timeline, you know, to that little bit, do a round preview. Go, oh, do I like that? You know, tweak, tweak, tweak. Mm. You know, and uh, until I was happy. Uh, with all of the performance like and that's and because you've set everything up in stages mm. and you've done you know you've done your blocking you've done your anticipation you've done your linear keyframes and you've done your easing and all of that the tweaking is only small things you don't right. ne- you don't need to do the big things because they're already they've already been looked after mm. and that's what this whole thing's kind of been is to is to just sort of you know give a step by step approach so that by the time you get to this point and you're, and you're putting the real like polish and all of that onto it mm. you've worked out all the big stuff and you can really concentrate on, on taking your animation to a, to a high level yeah awesome yeah and then just you know because I'm here I wanted to say hi just had a little extra pre-comp wanted to put on it hi hi yeah mm. and then we're done and that awesome in a in a very very quick nutshell yeah yeah we we, we raced through that so. yeah we did <laughs> how long would something like this take you in a I guess in a studio environment like in a typical you let's assume that you have the brief and nothing changes which happens yeah. all the time yes um, yeah, yeah all <laughs> <laughs> clients always ask for exactly what yeah, the brief first you paid yeah. in advance yeah yeah um, so no issues, no changes, yeah. clear output and what yeah. is required. Mm-hmm. Um, let's assume that exists. Yeah. Uh, how long would something like this take? All right. So if I, if I wasn't discussing it yes. and, and doing all that. Getting interrupted I, by me constantly. I, I could have done that within the hour. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So oh, From scratch, Illustrator yeah. to... Oh, not, not Illustrator and all of that. If yeah. I had the rigged character and all of that sort of stuff. Right. Yeah. And in, in a production environment... Mm you wouldn't be getting to animation like this without the client having approved a lot of stuff first. Right. Yeah, and that's why we do stuff like storyboards and animatics and, you know, all of that. And we put that in front of the client and say, approve this. And, um, and that's so that when we get to this very time-consuming process, mm. we don't have to redo it. Right. Because, you know, that's, we'd, at this stage, all the answers should be, you know, questions, sorry, should be answered by the client. Right. And we should know exactly what we're doing, mm. so that uh, when yeah when it comes to this point, we're we're not redoing anything. Yeah, mm. and that's just part of you know the production process. Yeah. So is that is that pretty common um, to use storyboards mm. and sort of sketches and things like that yep. early on to kind of get sign off. Yeah. And then to, and then to move into production. Yes, definitely. Rather so, than, yeah. rather than kind of checking in halfway through the production and going, hey, I haven't tweaked the rigs yet. No, <laughs> no. So you would, yeah, you would get a script approved, yeah. you know, and and that would have visual guides on it. It would already be listing. Oh, we're we're thinking the character will wave in a very jaunty fashion, but right. written in words. And right. we love teapots. Yes, so. exactly. Yeah, and uh, and then it would be a storyboard, and there would be a, a mm. little sketch of a guy waving jauntily. Right, and then <laughs> and then and then we might do an animatic, and it might be the the fully designed character as well. We might mm. do that in an animatic, and they could see what right. that character was going to look like, and mm. how you know, and maybe one of those poses, you know. And then uh, it, it depends, you know. Some clients uh, are willing to sort of you know take the hands off the wheel a bit, but we we try and give them as much right. as possible mm. in order to to make sure that there's no surprises at the end. Yeah. Um, there was a question in the chat that I, I'm interested in too um, about adding voice to animation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the question was, can you add, add voice? And I would assume the answer is yes, of course you can. But yeah. um, to expand on that as well, at what point does does voice become part of the animation? Mm-hmm. Um, does it 
you know, might you get an audio script and say, hey, we need an animation to action this script, or is it vice versa? So usually uh, the way we work is we'll have the script and then we'll, um, well, once the script is finalised, we would probably then uh, send the client, like, voice actors, you know, and, right. and, and reels of, of voice actors and be like, oh, we think this person would be great for this mm-hmm. uh, or this person would be great for this. Mm. And then we would... Uh, you could do storyboarding and that sort of stuff, but when it comes time to animation, you'd you'd want to have your uh, voice actors already recorded. Already recorded. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. And depending on the piece, that mm. that might be, you know, um, uh, you know, very straight sort of one, and you're just listening over the phone. But I've been in ones where you know you've you've sat half a day or a day directing, you know, and you and you you want as much out of the voice actor. As you would sort of, uh, mm. you know, a, a real actor. I mean, you, you look at some of the the big, you know, animation ones, and you know, the voice actors are, you know, crucial. I think it was The Simpsons was the first one, wasn't it, or an early one to start doing the voice acting before, and then the animation after. I I don't know. I Sorry. had that in an Adobe yeah. conference actually. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> um, Joshua was asking, yeah. is it easy to use Creative Cloud on Mac or Windows? I actually use it on both, so I have I have um, my MacBook here that I have everything installed on and then I have my beast of a PC machine at home. I don't know about yourself. Do you use exclusively Macs? Uh, just use exclusively Macs. Probably going to uh, start moving to PC uh, soon. Um, and the thing is, I'm, I'm not worried because they kind of work yeah. the same. Mm. Once once you've got the program open, they yeah. look exactly the same on both is it platforms. Command versus control. Once yeah. you figure that out, you kind of No, I think I'll be set. carrying my Mac keyboard over and just... <laughs> <laughs> How often do you use Smash Mouth as background music from Shrek? Well, oh. honestly, that's probably one of the funniest um, <laughs> comments I've ever seen in Adobe Live. Yes. Um, that's awesome. I don't know who that's directed yeah. to. But money's too tight for Smash Mouth. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 <laughs> we, don't, have, the, we don't have that Shrek money. <laughs> yeah, we can't get the licensing fees, yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, we would be all stars all the time, yeah. All stars all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, any kind of final advice to, to anyone out there or kind of final tips? We've been through a lot today. Yeah, I kind of, I, I really raced through a lot of that and, uh, you know, uh, but uh, look, I think, Looking at those twelve principles of animation, and and yeah. really really looking at what they do uh, mm. for, um, you know, motion design, yeah, uh, is is a huge help. And there are great resources on um, on the internet uh, for that sort of stuff, like on YouTube, yeah, uh, of running through the twelve principles. Because if you can get those uh, key principles down, like. Um, uh, anticipation, follow through, arcs, you know, easy mm. in, ease out, all of that. You know, more than just, like I said, more than just character animation, all your animation in After Effects is going to mm. look so much better. Cool. And uh, that's that's a, that's a really big thing. And then, yeah, and always think and plan stuff out, organize, because once you get that out of the way, you can mm. concentrate on what you actually want to do. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so for everyone that's watching, thank you for everyone in the chat. Um, it's been, been great. I'm going to yeah, check thanks. out some of this work that's been posted. Some, some of the animators have posted some of their work, so I'm going to check that out myself. Yeah, nice. Um, and, and if you're watching this on, uh, on YouTube, we will leave a link for, you know, for a couple of weeks, maybe a month, um, to the actual um, yep. file, which is very generous of you to, to lend to us for a while. So if you want to, if you're new or you want to kind of have a play around with everything we've covered, yeah, you should be able to have a bit of a poke around. Um, and and yeah, thank you so much. Um, we hope to see you. We'll be back here again next week. We're live every Wednesday at Adobe Live. Um, thank you so much, Dave. Thank you no for your worries. time. Awesome. Thank you. It's awesome. It great. See you later. Cheers.